In this video I want to explain the different types of genetic engineering because in the next video I want to look at the ethical responses to these types of genetic engineering. Well, let's start with somatic cell gene therapy. This is probably the most basic form of genetic engineering. This is where cells are modified in order to rectify some sort of disease. So, for example, diabetes to um, you know change the cell that produces insulin. And these, this kind of gene therapy does not affect future generations as it's not affecting the reproductive cells, it's affecting other cells. And it is, could potentially cure cancer. The major, major problem with this is that the sort of long-term effects of these are still unknown. We still don't know what are the long-term indirect effects of this. The second time is germline gene therapy. This is when um, gametes are kind of... Gene therapy is done to gametes in order to eradicate inherited diseases such as Down syndrome, Huntington's disease, haemophilia. So that's basically what happens. This is much more controversial because... As it's affecting future generations, one mistake could lead to a big disaster. It could be terrible. So this is more, we have to be more careful about. And it's more controversial. Um, Bernard Ho said that what we should do is we should first analyse the long-term indirect effects of somatic cell gene therapy. Once we've done that, test germline gene therapy on animals and then once we have public approval as well, then we should use it on humans because it is such a major type of genetic engineering. Third one is enhancement genetic engineering. This is like, this is not where you're um, sort of editing some, uh, rectifying someone's disease, you're kind of improving a person, <clears throat> which is also a controversial statement to make because it, this leads to things like designer babies and it's like, is wearing glasses, having poor eyesight, um, a sort of a disease or something which is not perfect, or is it just something you do because out of your own will? It's those kind of things, and <coughs> this can cause problems. For example, in India, ever since IVF clinics and um, this has come about, there ninety percent, <coughs> sorry, ninety percent plus of babies that have been dropped or the spare embryos are female and sex selection has led to a decrease in the amount of females um, born so it can have major major problems and because it's unnatural we still don't know what's going on and I think that enhancement genetic engineering is really bad I mean humans if they were allowed to choose their children they would choose the Victoria Beckhams and the David Beckhams they wouldn't go and choose Mother Teresa or Martin Luther King because not everyone is intelligent and many people would just choose their next Peter Andre and I just don't think humans have the best judgment to take into account uh, you know take in their hands something as major as that Eugenic gene genetic engineering is when a, like a, a group of people are edited. So what I mean to say is that if a whole group of people was, for example, eye colour was changed, this could be seen as another form of like what the Hitler tried to do, create his own better race, but you know this time more sophisticated technology. And it also means that if you are disabilities or if you're not perfect, you'll be discriminated so much because everybody else will be perfect and they'll be you. And it's a bit unnatural, this was very unnatural. Animal genetic engineering has been quite useful, but there are problems associated. For example, when chickens are genetically engineered to be fatter so that they produce more yield, their legs break off because they can't cope with their body weight. And also there's other things like, I think there is um, a chemical within milk, which basically, I think alpha-1 something, it helps with cystic fibrosis. So by doing animal genetic engineering, we can produce more of that to help more with cystic fibrosis. There are long-term things that we don't know with animals, and it could lead to, for example, diseases that animals have coming to humans. So, for example, um, pigs are bred to do loads of kind of jobs for humans. We could maybe get pig-related diseases. And this is possible because it's believed to be that AIDS has come from monkeys. So, quite interesting fact, actually. GM crops, these are when crops are genetically modified in order to produce more yield. This could basically um, increase the inequality because the rich can afford it and the poor can't, so it just keeps singing progressively. But then again, it could sort of cure the whole world hunger, which would be the greatest good, and that would be, you know, an amazing thing to do. 
cloning I have a big problem with but there's three types embryo reproductive and therapeutic embryo cloning is when embryos are cloned in order to get the stem cells to um, conduct therapeutic cloning or not therapeutic to you know sort of do genetic engineering and to produce those organs and stuff so that's embryo cloning and sometimes it's also used so that you could have two of the same children or you know to have one pregnancy rather than two but I don't know do people actually want that reproductive cloning when you're just cloning other humans really controversial what's the worth of life then if we can create it are we playing God's sanctity of life many problems and why would you want to reproduce another like clone another human anyway I mean except for an evil dictator I can't really think an eternal life I mean come on everybody has to die one day so I think it's a bit not very good method. Therapeutic cloning on the other hand I'm more positive about. This is when sort of organs like the liver or something are cloned in order to cure or replace the organ that had gone damaged in a person. Again we're extending the lives of humans which don't just have socially problems they have economic impacts you know our medical advancements are so good that we have an aging population. This means that people have to live longer and is there a point in people living longer and dying later or, you know, working less, dying earlier? I mean, because at the end of the day you get tired. You just want to naturally do stuff, relying on medicines to take you forward. It's not that great. Anyway, I hope this video has helped. In my next video, find a responses, ethical responses like utilitarianism to these forms of um, genetic engineering.